Spike, a cute German Shepherd service animal cartoon character, and Brandon Cole, a Caucasian man, are in a large room with curtains and a picture behind them. Brandon is holding a video game controller. They talk with each other. Spike moves his head, arms, and body as they chat. Camera angles change from wide, medium, and tight shots. Hi, kids. I know a lot of us love playing video games. I'm here with a friend who loves playing them, too. Brandon Cole. Hey there, Spike. Hi, Brandon. We want kids to know that everyone can play video games whether they have a disability or not. That is exactly right. Tell us about yourself and what you do. Well, Spike, I am totally blind. So what I do is I work with the people that make games to help them add features that make it so I can play games as well. Tell me more. Well, sometimes that means a lot of things, Spike. It can mean adding new sound effects to games to make sure we can hear things around us, adding new voices to games that will read things on screen to us, or sometimes a little bit of help with moving throughout the world. That's so cool. Right now, we want to tell you more about how this works. Brandon sits in a chair and is playing a video game. Brandon Cole became interested in video games when he was younger. I started gaming when I was very young. Uh, and the reason I started gaming was because of a trick played on me by my older brother. So we decided that it would be hilarious to fool me into thinking I was playing a game that I was never playing. Super Mario Brothers game with Mario spitting fireballs. Um, he handed me a, an unplugged controller while he played the entirety of Super Mario Brothers and convinced me that I was doing all the things. So, really nice guy, that, that guy. Really nice guy. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, once he revealed that punchline, once I was kind of, you know, I was, I was kind of crushed by that at the time, but it did kind of set a precedent for me. I made a vow that day, and I decided that I would beat a game one day without his help. Just, just one game is all I said for myself. I just said one game. And that's what got me started with messing around with video games, just trying things, trying to figure out, you know, what the patterns were. One thing I learned in the not playing of Mario Brothers was that I, I figured out that I could learn what the sounds meant. And once I knew that I could do that, um, I started trying that with other games and just trying to figure out what their sounds meant and, and what, what, uh, what that went with, you know, what each thing went, what each, what each button was for. Brandon has beaten video games by himself and now helps video game creators make their games accessible so people with disabilities, including those who are blind, can play them. For the blind, we have things like screen narration, Navigational assist, traversal assist, uh, aim assist is a good feature for us, um, depending on the game. You know, sometimes you don't need that. So it, it really depends on what, what the game is that you're playing. Uh, some games need different things than other games do. Uh, for low vision, there's colorblind mode. There's, you know, subtitles at varying sizes and different colors that you, can, that you can change. There's high contrast mode to make things stand out better for low vision players. Side-by-side -side pictures of Ratchet and Clank game in high contrast mode and regular mode. Video courtesy of Sony and YouTube. This is an example of a game in the traditional mode and high contrast mode side by side. One difference is that there are fewer colors in the high contrast mode. A man and a 12 year old girl sit on a couch. Audio description is where a voice helps to describe what is going on. She slides over as the man takes a seat next to her. A neighbor, huh? He leans back then rests his head on his hand. And navigational and traversal assist helps a character to get around in the game and not to get stuck, especially if there are objects ahead of them. I think one of the most important things is just to be aware of accessibility features and know that despite what they might look like to some other people, um, accessibility features, using the accessibility features is not cheating. And that might sound like uh, an obvious thing to say, but it, it really isn't because the, the thing that we have to acknowledge is that the people that actually need these features really need them. If they don't have them, if they don't use them at all, they won't be able to play the game at all. For us, it isn't easy for other reasons. The features for us only make things balanced enough that we can play it. Um, they don't make it easy for us. People who need these features might play a game differently than you, but it's just because they want to play it too. Stories of Blossom Game Simulation on Screen one example of a children's game that is accessible for people who are blind is Stories of Blossom, which is a point-and-click adventure game that is available on computers and Xbox. Brandon says it makes sense for games to be made accessible so more people can play and enjoy them. Who knows who out there might be a future game developer one day. Um, you never know. It could happen to anyone. People could decide that they want to make video games 
And when they do, I want them to have a firm grasp of accessibility and, and start their thought processes with accessibility in mind. Because really, when you make a game, you want everyone to play it. Brandon and Spike back on camera. Brandon, if there are kids or parents who are watching this who wanted to check out accessibility features of video games, how would they do that? Well, they might start with uh, their mobile phones, actually. There are several games out there that exist for your phone that you can play even as a totally blind person. Interesting. Anything else? Well, I might recommend, Spike, that their parents check out applevis.com. That's A-P-P-L-E-V-I-S.com. That will give them a resource where they can find a bunch of apps and games that are accessible to totally blind people. Thanks, Brandon. Let's get back to gaming, and hopefully I can beat you this time. <laughs> I warn you, Spike, I'm pretty good at these things. We'll see you next time, kids.